we, we're going to have our brother come on in and speak his mind, Mr. Political, on what just happened in Buffalo. My phone has been blown up and they've been asking for you, brother. And I know you're here. And I want to ask you, brother, what is it that you see out of this that the masses don't see? There's definitely something that you're figuring out in this whole thing that's very deceptive because we're being manipulated and engineered into a certain mindset while they're setting up for a war, but not the kind of war that we anticipated with somebody or some entity externally. And I want you to expound on that. But welcome back once again, my brother. Well, thank you so very much, Lance. Um, I usually um, start off with a happy greeting, a greeting that brings comfort to the heart and enlightenment to the mind. But today, unlike any other time, I'm going live. And I usually hold back any opinion until some time go by so I can truly digest what I am consuming through the multimedia concerning any incidents that directly affects Black America. Not Afro-Americans, but Black America. And there's the distinct difference, even though some of our people cannot recognize the difference. So to go directly to why I'm here today, and it disturbs me to have to say this, but unfortunately, it is becoming true. It is becoming clear that Creepy Joe, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, in my previous statements, was trying to start a war. In my understanding, I was believing, truly believing in my heart that the next war for America would be in a foreign land. That the next war for America and its youth and its mothers be a war against another country. Previously in our lifetime, we went to war over oil. We went to war over individual political ideologies, but not in this circumstance. In this circumstances, the war is going to be on our own soil. That once again, in America's understanding that brother will kill brother, that there is no way to stop this as long as these people are running our government, are running our city municipality. And unfortunately, yesterday, there was a newscast where all parties concerned about the death of 10 innocent people. This is not the first time. This is not the second time. This is not the third time. This is the fourth time. A total of 53 people, 53 innocent people from shopping to praying, from race to race, this is becoming the norm. And even though the president chimed in, even though the president showed concern, unbeknownst to the people, he is orchestrating the new war. He is manipulating the situation to create a racial war in this country. Yes, I understand that you're shocked. Yes, I understand 
that you believe I have lost my mind, I have fell and bumped my damn head. But unfortunately, none of that occurred. That what I'm telling you is true and factual. All you have to do is do your research and you will see what I see. So in that, I must bring you the negative mood that it will come a time before Joe Biden leaves office that black people in America will have to grab their guns, take the cuffs off, and deal with their chickens that come home to roost. We have followed the tutelage of the church, which was manipulated by the Democratic Party. We are following individuals and taking suggestions from individuals in the Democratic Party. And they are fully aware that they're the problem and not the solution. They're fully aware that their rhetoric is not resonating through our young people's hearts and minds. That they have misused the vote and the people's confidence to further their careers, their political aspects, and their financial statements that they are more far removed than the ignorant people they say they represent. This is not my opinion of the American Black who was manipulated into the Democratic Party, looking for hope, freedom, safety. The American Black people did not let the Democratic Party down. The Democratic Party let us down and continuously let us down with their rhetoric and their belief in hopes to keep you silent and keep you on the plantation. But none of that matters anymore on the eve of the war that Joe Biden is looking for, that he is orchestrating with the system with the assistance of the Black church, with the assistance of the Democratic Party and its membership. It is so critical now, even in your disbelief, in your desire to keep the status quo, it is no longer out of our hands. Our children no longer want to feed that chicken. They came home to roost. No longer do they want to howl that chicken that came home to roost. Nor do they want to pet the farmer who maintained that chicken that is coming home to roost. We as Black America, we as Black Americans, it is time for us to send a strong and dominant message so our children will not see their country turn into a battlefield. So they will not see what their ancestors had to endure to create racial harmony in this country. We, those of us, the Black American man, the Black American woman who served our country, who still believe that we have a right here because we have people in the ground, are coming to a wild conclusion. Yes, that's what I said a wild conclusion. And by Mr. Charlie's 
understanding a wild conclusion means that we're out of control. I say to Mr. Charlie in the left drippings from his nut that black Americans do not hate white people. Black Americans do not despise white people. Black America do not overwhelmingly distrust black, white people, excuse me. But what we do understand is it's time for you to get an understanding of us. And if it means that blood run in the streets because you refuse to seek peace in others, yes, that's the word I use, others, whites, Asians, Hispanics, Ukrainian, Russian, Polish, whoever you are is those who assimilate into American and come here as immigrants. We are putting you on notice today that you are not our allies. You are not our friend. That you come with a false olive branch of peace. That your ultimate goal is to create a race war. This individual who had the audacity and the gall to go before a judge and plead not guilty. You wrote in your own manifest that you're guilty. You wrote on not one, not two, but almost 12 pages and more. You clearly define your motives for what you did and your reasoning for what you did. But the system enable you to say that you were not guilty, that those bodies laying in the streets were a figment of our imagination, that those who lost mothers, fathers, and children are not worthy of some real conversation about what occurred. At the end of this bum food, this clown court that they're going to portray before us, that he will go into jail. Yes, he's going to go to jail. But they will put him in such comfort and such luxury and hide the fact that all those who commit heinous crimes as such as he is and such as he has done is given preferential treatment because they are your pawn in beginning this war. That you must keep him safe like a trophy. All the while, the skin the blood of the people he killed, that he slaughtered, that he plotted to murder, will not be reassured of their safety in this country. And that leads us back to our forefathers. Even though those forefathers are portrayed as white men, my forefather will portray in 1863 in Massachusetts as free black men who took up arms for their freedom. Free black men who mobilized in military form to fight a racist group of individuals. We find ourselves on this door again. We find ourselves 
with each and every black man left with a choice of our right in America of self-defense. We are persuaded to throw our right of self-defense to the wind as if we were less than America, as if we were less than people who have blood in the ground. That's the ground, the pavement, the road that you walk upon. It is not drenched in the blood of your people. So today, I must say this, and others will scorn me for the statement that I make, but it is time for Black America to pick up their guns and defend themselves. It is time for you to live the credo of this country and the blood of the people you have in the ground. It is time for you to take up arms in self-defense against those Caucasians, not all Caucasians. Be very careful in your understanding of my choice of words. I am a prior military man who raised his hand in confusion, in belief, and love of one's country and family and raise my hand as ignorant as others believe that I was to protect this land against foreign and domestic terrorists. It is time for Black America to pick up their guns. It is time for Black America to observe the Second Amendment. It is time for you to be better and simple as your forefathers who fought their way out of chains to protect their family in their position in this country. I say this to you honestly and openly and with a pure heart, not with malicious harm in my hand, not with malicious harm in my heart, and not malicious harm in my mind. I say this to you to give you advance warning, to get you to prepare to defend yourself. It is time for Black America to pick up the gun and put down the Christ that white America made Jesus bear. It is sad for any individual in America to lump some one group of Americans as a heinous destructive factor. But we can no longer ignore. We can no longer turn the other cheek. It is no longer time to be on your knees and not die on your feet. I send you this warning. I ask you to stand in protection of the Constitution. I implore you with a pure heart that is time for you to protect yourself. It is sad that we get to this point with Creepy Joe. It is sad after all had been slaughtered that he finally picked up the phone and shown some sense of care. 
but the ultimate sadness. The sadness that will buckle our knees and draw tears to our eyes. That he knew and he participated in creating this point in time which we are living in. That Joe Biden in his morbid way of Alzheimer's, that he feel necessary, he feels a necessary need to be a puppet master in creating an environment where brother will kill brother. We have never had a president who purpose went out his way to make brother kill brother. We must evaluate this truthfully and honestly. We must step away from the Democratic Party. We must not even from the pulpit accept any candidate, any person that is aligned with them because they live in a bubble, because they are so far removed from Black America that they're not even concerned about their own safety. That Mr. Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, borderline child molester, Joe Biden, has been orchestrating a racial war that only he can stop what is going on. And in his refusal, in his refusal to stop what is inevitably going to occur before he leaves the White House, that he has no intention of addressing it in such a manner that will make all of us feel safe. So please, I beg of you, I humble myself. I put myself in my own safety on the line to tell my people that it is time to defend yourself. That Joe Biden is orchestrating behind the scene a racial war. Yes, Joe Biden, the Black National Caucus, the Theology Pimp, and the pseudo-Black HBU politician are conspiring together to exterminate you as if you were a Jew and it was 1943. Yes, black people, that's what I said. They're trying to take you back to 1943. The only thing is they replaced the oven with the gun. They replaced the Nazi with the police. And all those fascists, not all white people, it would be ignorant of me to believe at any time that all white people have malicious harm in their heart. That is an ignorant person. When they lay us down, they lay us down together. Color has nothing to do with this situation other than it being a tool for the ultimate goal. So this is your boy, Mr. Political, bearing the bad news of what is occurring. What you have to prepare yourself for. They will show you 
in the trial of this heinous animal that their only desire is a race war. Their only desire is to destroy this country and make brother kill brother. This is your boy, Mr. Political. All those who are offended, the proper thing is to ask forgiveness. But common sense tells me to say, kiss my ass. And I'm out. I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Can't be a real nigga, might get you canceled. Fuck the whole system, need the shit dismantled. Cop a street nigga like the utmost want me. Trying to rule the block, but don't know what goes on me. News got a story with a new take on me. Carrying out the window with the screw face on me But I know that God love me when my blunt burn 95 degrees and I can't get sunburned Wonder when your government will make me legal Burn the whole city if I can't be equal Get off my dick please Brad I earn that 400 years how you still ain't learn I take pack to the lung kill the stress to the head I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do, way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Shout out to the crackers trying to gentrify the genre. Tell them free my niggas, middle finger to your honor. In the days coming down the seconds on the timer. Goofy niggas still trying to purchase that designer. About to buy a chopper, learn to grow my own food. Cause I don't like the look that get me in the whole foods. And when you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. But it ain't on me now, I'm limping cause my dick heavy. But ain't shit sweet, niggas think we thin. My whole attitude on MC Ren. It's my neighborhood now, Bob. I bought that 400 years how you still ain't caught i take pack to the lung kill the stress to the head i'm trying to do more for the soul way less for the bread oh yes sir uh, i take pack to the lung kill the stress to the head i see the things that they do way less than they say we're gonna bring it up all day today. We're coming back later for more. Real, baby, it ain't over yet today. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out.